I want you to imagine you're in algebra class and your teacher is going on about some silly topic, imaginary numbers. I squared is negative one and something about multiplying by I being a rotation of 90 degrees. As you're half paying attention and flipping through your textbook, you see something scribbled in the margin. Go to the old field behind the school where the supply shed is. Walk directly from the shed to the pine tree counting your steps. Once there, turn 90 degrees to the left and walk the same number of steps away from the tree. Mark this point. Go back to the shed and walk to the willow tree counting your steps. Turn 90 degrees to the right this time and walk the same number of steps. Mark this spot also. Treasure is buried halfway between the marked spots. Your heart begins to race. Immediately after class, you rush out to the old field only to discover there's no trace of the shed. You see the pine and willow trees, so the treasure has to be here somewhere. You feel a bit dismayed that you might have to dig a lot until inspiration strikes. Maybe you can actually use some of the stuff you learned in class. Pretend this field is the complex plane. The real axis is horizontal and the imaginary axis is vertical. And pretend the trees are at negative one and one on the real axis. The shed used to be somewhere in the field. Thus, its position would have to be at some a plus bi where a and b are real numbers, they're just unknown. We can subtract the real and imaginary components of the shed and the trees, giving us vectors. These vectors represent not only the distance, but the direction between the shed and the trees. Since you learned multiplying by i gives a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin, we can multiply this first value by i rotating the point 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now this isn't quite in the position where it should be. We'll have to compensate by then subtracting by one. Now it's in the place of our first marking. Let's do the exact same thing with the second value, except we want to multiply by negative i to rotate this counterclockwise 90 degrees. Again, it's not quite in the right spot. We'll have to compensate by adding one. Now we have the location of our two markings, and we know the treasure is halfway between them. We can find the midpoint by adding the two complex numbers and dividing by two. After a bit of algebra, we see A and B magically canceling out. That is, the position of the shed didn't matter and the treasure will be located at positive i in our complex plane. 